Major Red Dames was one of five officers trained to monitor and analyze remote viewing, a technique said to allow users to psychically see locations, events or other information from great distances. The Top Secret Project, run by the Defense Intelligence Agency, would be dubbed Project Stargate. The Central Intelligence Agency, to whom Project Stargate was transferred in 1995, cancelled it, and declassified files related to some of its aspects in a massive document dump earlier this year. The agency concluded that the program had no hope of being used for operations, although a retrospective evaluation conducted following its closure suggested that there was some evidence of psychic functioning. In an exclusive interview with Sputnik, retired Major Ed Dames, one of a handful of Army personnel to receive training in remote viewing, and who would go on to coordinate and run remote viewing teams, revealed that the technology was not only real, but that it was successfully used in operations against the U.S.'s Soviet adversaries, as well as other actors. Assigned to the Remote Viewing Unit in January 1986, Dames worked for the program until December 1989. Below is Major Dames' account, featuring only minimal, mostly stylistic and grammar tweaks. Spying in the Dark Days of the Cold War Sputnik, could you give us an overview of your professional career from back in the 1980s and up to the current day, and what activities you are engaged in right now? Dames, I worked at very high levels of U.S. intelligence, Officer Secretary of Defense at virtually celestial levels as a science and technology officer. My expertise in particular was biological warfare, and I was a targeting officer, I got to choose what targets the U.S. intelligence apparatus would pursue. Most of those were Soviet at the time of the Cold War, of course. In certain cases, some of the Soviet programs and to a certain extent the Chinese threat programs were so classified that by hook or by crook we could not penetrate them. I had at my disposal all the tools that intelligence could provide me, satellites, agents on the ground, all kinds of exotic things, but we could not gain access or get insight into some very, very classified programs. But we had one tool, a remote viewing unit, where operators would use altered states to be able to target the inside of these facilities. They were providing me with intelligence that I could use to cross queue to redirect other systems to gain information. I began to lean on this remote viewing unit, which was an army unit at the time, and became so enthralled with and interested in it that I stepped down from these high levels to take over as operations and training officer of this unit. That was 33 years ago or so, and I'm still engaged in this kind of work. When I retired, I trained a civilian team, of remote viewers, and what we do now in particular is support the FBI, looking for fugitives. I have a personal interest in missing children, and I spend a great deal of time in that pursuit. But occasionally I still focus on some scientific targets, ergo the recent report on the origin of the emission of this mysterious ruthenium-106 isotope in Europe, I tracked that down to its emission source and provided, the information, to French and German scientists.
everything that exists in the universe is a pattern of information, and what we discovered in the laboratory, and what we started to apply, was a method for how the unconscious part of our mind communicates with conscious awareness when we're targeting a specific person, place, thing or an event. We can hold focus on those things, whereas a psychic can't do this, they will lose the target and slip all over the place. We have very, very rigid protocols that we use to hold on to a target, and to gain as much descriptive information about it as possible. That's what I do. A project so secret, only 100 people were briefed on its existence. Only 100 people could be briefed on, Stargate's, existence. Can you give us some background on Project Stargate and on the confidentiality around it back in the 1980s? It was a top secret, limited access program. Only 100 people could be briefed on, its, existence. What was classified were the people who were in it, what we were doing and our capabilities. The capabilities are still, classified. The CIA has released most of the documents about our program except for the ones that are highly sensitive. As operations officer of the unit, I know what those operations were, and they were very, very effective in supporting the U.S. intelligence community. For instance, when used for counterintelligence, we could locate Soviet spies where other systems could not do that. It was highly classified, and only a few members of Congress were briefed on our operation, but they did not really want to be associated with us publicly, because of the connection with what they perceived as the occult or paranormal. We were kind of the red light district of the intelligence community as far as the Stargate program went. Later on. It shifted to the Defense Intelligence Agency, and that's where I was operations and training officer. When Congress decided to disband, the program, and it got sent to the CIA, that's where it ended its life. But I became the keeper of the keys, and today I've evolved the techniques and the methods, which were highly effective, and, which, no other tool, can match. I am not easily entertained. I would not have stuck with this particular technique and method for 30 plus years, I am still in awe of its capability. Reading the Soviets' minds? Project Stargate's top priorities. Major, could you please elaborate on the particular challenges that you faced back in the 1980s during the Cold War with regard to Project Stargate? The challenges, were particularly science and technology related, and they were particularly directed at the erstwhile Soviet Union. All the new science-driven technologies that the Soviets were using in terms of offensive weapons systems, our job was to penetrate those programs and describe them, so that the US could develop defensive measures. That was predominantly what we did. We had some side issues, 
for instance counter-narcotics. We could direct the Coast Guard to a particular ship that had sealed cocaine or, some other drug, inside its bulkhead. We could direct the Coast Guard to exactly where to weld and open a bulkhead and remove the cocaine, but that was a minor part of our job. Perhaps you have a couple of memories from operations or events which bring a smile to your face when you recall them. There are a couple. In one instance we were provided with a satellite photograph of a boomer, a Soviet nuclear submarine, and there were two very large glowing white spheres above it, and our science and technology operators asked us what these were. The Navy was particularly interested in this. We spent a week looking at these glowing white spheres above this Soviet sub. The Navy came back and said so what do you have? I said they were real, it's not an artifact of spurious radiation or anything that the satellite was afflicted with. These were real things. Okay and, what else about them? I was asked. Well, they're not from around here, I answered. And the Navy officer said you mean they're Chinese? No, they're not from around here. He got the message that they were something else, not of this particular world, said thank you very much, and we didn't see him again. And the second? Dot. It was right on the cusp of when I retired. We were asked by the General Motors Corporation to get inside the deep mind of Saddam Hussein to discern what his plans and motives were. So we did that for General Motors. But back in the military days, most of our targets were science and technology related. My particular concern was offensive biological warfare programs. I and my team had to get inside Soviet research laboratories, and discern what forms of anthrax, what forms of botulinum were being produced as weapons. You can see if you look at my background and my decorations. Some of them deal with exactly these kinds of things, how we penetrated the offensive Soviet biological weapons program.